nice here, man. That's right, man. Oh my god. You gotta make one like that for Staatsmacht. I'm representing you, don't worry. You know, I'm, I'm, more, uh, I'm more the guy who sits at the beach and goes fishing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so palm sweater. trees. Yep. Yeah. I like my fishing at the ocean. Yeah, you got the suntan and everything. Oh my God, I got some big sharks. Yeah? Super nice. Do you have like, you should, uh, I've seen guys, they like on YouTube, they like get a pond and they make oh, the know. pond and they put the sharks in the pond and yeah. stuff. They have bull sharks, The salt yeah. water pond. Uh, Oh, salt water pond? Yeah, like they make it at their house and then they go to the beach, they fish, they catch the sharks oh and they God. bring it and they throw it in the pond we and they watch it. We ate one. How was it? <laughs> it was okay. The shark was not as good. Stingray was really good. Stingray is perfect. Really? Oh, Stingray was really good. Stingray was great. The shark was not, not as good as I thought. Tough? It's like weird meat. It feels a little bit of consistency, like a little like, I don't know what to say, like pork, a little bit like pork meat. Yeah, kind of alligator. Like greasy? And you must like, when you catch the shark, you must kill him direct and get him direct. I did it later, I got it later. But they, they say they piece through the skin. Yeah. So if all the ammonia in the, in the meat, so you oh. must like, I don't know. Next time I must do it different. Ammonia in the meat, Oof. Yeah. Ready? Okay, we start. All right, guys, we are live. It is time for a, another SHIELD podcast. I think it's SHIELD podcast number four. And I have none other than the one and only Stefan Schopp, <laughs> owner of Von der Staatsmarkt. I hope I said it right. Perfect. Absolutely right. Von der Staatsmarkt Kennel. And uh, my friend and a guy that we love to train with. He's here for a training seminar at our facility. And we're very happy to have him on the podcast. Thank you so much for the invitation. Yeah, I'm happy to be here, like many years before we did it, or meet somewhere else, or have a good time to hang out and talk dogs, bullshit around a little bit, and like, let the truth out. That's right. <laughs> and that's why I like Stefan. You know, when I, um, Stefan, do you remember the first time you ever talked to me? Not in person, on social media. I don't remember, maybe. I remember. Was I rude? <laughs> Fuck, you were rude, man. <laughs> but it was good. I post a video, remember the Working Dog Forum? Yes. So I posted a video uh, with my, um, th with uh, the first dog I started to learn how to train dogs with. And I made like a video of some obedience. And like I posted it on there. And you were like, this doesn't make any sense. What the, f what are you doing? You actually <laughs> <laughs> said something like that. <laughs> it sounds like me in the past. Yeah. <laughs> the past. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Is, everything's changed now, right? I think I'm not anymore so <laughs> online, so verbal about things because I realize that you cannot help stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, even stupid people can learn a little bit. So from time to time, they would listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's true. So, like, what I did when when um, when that happened, I actually didn't get like upset about it. I was like, I wonder what he means. Like, what does he mean? Why, why doesn't what, why doesn't what I did make sense? And then you fucking learn years, years of learning, you know, just, and then you're like, yeah, of course, none of it made sense. It was Absolutely. stupid. It was stupid training. Like it didn't, didn't mean anything. It was meaningless training. It was just doing stuff to do stuff. I think it happened to everyone of us when you start in dog training some or later, but you, you start training, you see what other people do and you think it's right. If it makes any sense. You maybe don't think about it, but you do it because other people do it. If you would sit back and, and really think about the exercise by itself, you might would come to, to the conclusion that it doesn't make any sense what you do right now. It's like, but most people don't think about training. They do it because they do it, you know? It's just like, do it. They just, just do it. Yeah. They don't think about the, what it takes to, to do it the right way. I mean, it's the biggest part for sure. What I can see in the many seminars around the country, what I give, it's like, you see often the same common mistakes, you know? People don't think what they do. They do it because I saw it somewhere, they think it's the right way to do. There's no outcome in the exercise in the, in the past, in the last two, one, two, three years where they trained, they still do the same. Why? Because they don't change it, you know? They did it the whole time like this, or the club members do this the whole time, or the people they follow, they do it the whole time, you know? And, and there's no change in the result? No, never. Oh, Never. we really suck at podcasting. We totally did not introduce Carson. <laughs> just, just be quiet. Yeah. Sit over there, Carson. Mm -hmm. Look pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Guys, this is Carson. You guys know Carson. Carson Collins. Yep. Carson's a great guy. Yep. Great guy. Yep. That's right. 
So <laughs> I like Carson personally. I don't know other people. I really like him. I appreciate that. Somebody really like him. Yeah. yeah, I really like him. So Stefan, why don't you talk a little bit about your history? Because you're you're you've been in the game for a long yeah. time. Yeah, I started like in I think like 1990. I started with a with a pit bull from a shelter. Uh, at this time, was in Germany like a big no go the, the pit bulls you know was already like a, in a bad light and through a old girlfriend I ended up in a German Shepherd dog club in Germany they didn't take me in because of my dog they took me in because they could see I could run for sure for them you know they said like okay you know the young guy the pit bull doesn't matter but the boy can run for sure so at this time I did like Wing Chun and Taekwondo and other stuff so it was like I was really really well moving and they could see that pretty sure and that's like after the first time they are training I was like less or more like doing helper work I mean like did I know what I do for sure not but yeah they told me what to do and I was running around you know that's like my start from there I was there a few years in the in the club um learned some stuff maybe a lot of false stuff at this time it was no internet like today you know today it's easy over internet to see the right things at this time you hang your club out maybe the neighbor club maybe the club down the road But the only big difference you only saw in the big championships, when you suddenly see like people who make the big points, consistency with their teams, you know, and then other club like moved me over to them and started learning there. And then over the years I trained with, with for sure the best people in, in, in Germany for, for a long, long time. So they, they brought you on because right. they saw you were fit and they're like, he's going to be a good helper. Right. After, after like, maybe like, I don't know, maybe like two, three years doing helper work in my normal club, right? The other clubs. They saw what I could do under the lead of, of these people in my old club, not maybe not great people, but they, they, they did some stuff, right? So it, they, they, they took me over in their club, you know? There was already like, in the past, there was already like paid money in Germany, you know, not a lot of money, but you had already money to do helper work, you know? So they said, if you come over here and be our second decoy or third decoy, you know, you get paid this and this for, for a day, whatever. So for sure I did it, you know? It was like some money, especially in Germany, you know, some money is good in Germany. And then you do like training with like good people and then with the good people you go even to better people, right? With the better people you go to the best people, you know? It's yeah. like there's a circle in Europe, and especially in, 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 in Germany, the, there are so many clubs in a close area, you know? So you have like really access to, to many, many good people. I feel like you are probably, and this isn't me pumping your tires, I don't pump people's tires, but I think you're probably one of the most underrated um, trainers in North America. And I've trained with some really good fucking guys. You, you know, know I, I would not call it underrated. I don't bend over for anyone, you know. I'm, <laughs> I'm Stefan, you know, since I live here, I, I live the way I lived in Germany. I don't take any crap from no one. I don't kiss anyone up, you know. If you want that I come to you, you know, you pay for it. I'm not your friend, you know. I mean, we are, we are friends, whatever. But it's like, <laughs> you know. You still, you still must, 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 must roll some, That's right. some, some coins over, yeah, right? Here for free. Because the kids, <laughs> the kids must eat. But it's like, you know, I, I'm not the person who goes to, to the, to the big championships and goes like, hangs out with the people at the, at the tailgate, whatever, you know? No, I go there with my people, you know, hang out with my people, not in the host hotel, you know, we go to, to a different hotel. We stay ourselves. I don't care about the social aspect with these people, like sucking up, getting drunk. I don't like it. You know, I have my people where I'm loyal to. And I go through fire for them, whatever it takes. But there will be never a person who is like, like looking for recognition in this like polit polit political correct circus, you know? Because I'm, I don't need it, you know? I don't need it. I, I have a good life like it is, you know? I have like yeah. more, more, more clients I can handle really, you know? It's like, and I don't need all this, this circus around the people, you know? Well, dog like, sport is very political. Absolutely. Just yeah. like dog showing, like anything. Absolutely. It's very political. Everybody wants to be seen with some people, taking pictures with some people. I mean, a good example for that is, you know, I think like 2016 or 17, I think there were from the, like six dogs on the World Championship, you know, two dogs consistent my training, right? With like secret, no one can know, you know, they cannot say because it would be like, Not, not right to the club and to the mentor, you know. It's like two other dogs had like the dumbbell work done by me. It's like all this like little, little secret playing, you know what, on the end. I don't say any names, you know, you can look it up by yourself and you know who it is, but it's like on the end. That's like the IGP world today where people are more like political motivated to do the right thing 
than 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 be straight back, you know? Yeah. They, they 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 don't have a straight back anymore today. Today they're all like like I call autumn like little maggots, you know? <laughs> they eat on the on the on the cheese a little bit there, a little bit there, and then they try to look good with the right people, you know? I don't I don't care about it. I really don't need it. Yeah. I don't need it. I have a good life, you know, move to Georgia, go to the beach a lot, you know. I don't need like sucking up to anyone. So one thing obviously I like about Stefan is he's a and this is why I always come back to Stefan because he's a real one. I like real guys. Thank you. I like real fucking guys that are like straight up. They're going to say it's good. It's not good. They're going to say the dog's good. The dog's not good. Absolutely. They're going to, they're going to be straight up about everything. They're going to give their opinion and they're not going to pump your tires because Absolutely. they think they can get an extra dollar out of you. And that's, that's the kind of people I like to work with. And then also professionals. Like when we train, it's always like, Absolutely. Professional stuff, you know, things are happening, productive things are happening. If we have something to fix, it gets fixed. I like that stuff. I think it's important to to see today the the base of dog training in IGP or Schutzhund or whatever you want to call it, you know. Too many people try to look fancy, try to achieve like a fantasy picture that they can never can reach, right? And forget about the rules forget about the points, forget about what the judge sees on the day, right? And that's like, I think important in training is like, you must train for the points, right? You train for the points. If you train for fantasies, it never, never reached, reached like, like, like a level where you can compete with, with, with the good ones, you know? Mm -hmm. Too many people like today, like focus on like, like crazy good healing, you know, like, like throwing the legs, head position, whatever the basics, they suck most of the time, you know? Dog forging or dog is like, like cricket, or whatever else, but they don't see it. Why? Because they're so blinded by the by the by the healing by itself, you know, or many other things, you know, dumbbell work. They create like more speed than dog can handle, you know. You see, like in the jumps, most of the time, you know, dogs jump flat suddenly, you know. Then people say like, oh, in the past, the dog jumped better. No, it's not true, you know. In the dog, we forced to jump, you know. In the dog, we never make drive on the jump. We throw the dog over, and the dog was like like autumn, like a little bit like in an avoidance mode, you know, but he, he jumped clear. Why? Because he didn't put speed in there. Mm -hmm. Today, people make everything speed and everything like fancy looking, but then people talk like, oh man, you see, you cannot jump. No, you cannot jump because you have too much speed there. Yeah. People don't think about it, you know, but it's like the fact when we train together, you watch the dog for a minute or two minutes and you say, you know what? I see the problem. We must do this and this and this, you know, also if it doesn't look for like a week or two weeks, you must do it. Why? Otherwise, you cannot reach this goal what you want. Yeah. You cannot talk around it or only make you feel better. And it's like, like, like keep friends, you know, if it doesn't go, it doesn't go. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, for IGP, if, for sure, there's, we get obsessed with like the picture, you know, always like, Absolutely. oh, look at the sexy healing, look at the speed on the, on the recall or the retrieve. But sometimes you're right. It's like, it's too much and it doesn't actually lead to a results on the trial field because it actually causes more uh, more point loss than than you gain. So that's definitely yeah, I definitely have seen that and learned it the hard way. Absolutely. <laughs> and you could, you know you can go through the list, you know, go through the list of the competitors and who made it the last last years to the worlds, you know. Many times you find the find find the same name, you know, with the people and you watch their tracking, you know, normally consistent tracking, you know, the obedience most time in the part between like 85 to 92, you know, consistent and then bite work like a V most of the time, that how they make it to the world team, right? Yeah. Do they really care about like a fancy healing? No, they call, call they care about the solid work, you know, solid consistency. Solid points, you know, mm -hmm. solid points. Wherever they go, is solid points. Is it fancy? For sure not. But again, you know what? These people outwork other people, you know. They make consistent the same stuff, consistent on the dock, consistent the same picture, and consistent the same points, you know, for sure with a friendly judge. Maybe go to 92, you know, with a with a judge who's really strict and doesn't like you. It's maybe 85, but still, again, with the tracking points, you know, 98, 99 tracking, and like a V and bite work, you're all time there, you know. Yeah, yeah, fundamentals. Absolutely. So one thing um, that maybe people don't know about you, but they should know about you, is uh, your kennel, von der Staatsmarkt, has produced some very big name dogs that Absolutely. you see in a lot of pedigrees. Absolutely. A lot of pedigrees. Quartz, von der Staatsmark. Yep. Um, Quartz is in so many dogs. Like, Absolutely. He's yeah. in like, I don't yeah. know, probably if you look at all the, he's in my dog right now. Yeah. I don't know if he's in your dog. Um, I don't know. There was like a Dutch guy I, I know well from the past and from time to time we write emails and, and one point he said like, 
I think Quasar like over over in over 10,000 pedigrees already now. That's crazy. What, what only he could see on his on his program mm. what he has, you know. I don't know the exact number because like many countries, you know, they don't don't send in information to to the SV or wherever else, you know. So it's like if the dog is bred in let's say like Portugal or or Spain and it's not registered with Germany, you never see the dogs, you know, or Czech yeah. Republic, whatever, you know. Mm. So that's also like that's the same reason that many stats are not really like like registered because they never get like transferred, you know. Mm -hmm. So for example, when you see like a dog, let's say, I mean, old times, Javier Takamada, I think he had like 1100 dogs offspring. Yeah. He was the winner. I think he was also the world winner too. So he had like 11 kids, I think like in the SV genetics as, a, as offspring. The real number is way higher because like the, the litters in, in Holland, in Belgium, Slovakia, Slovenia, they're not all registered. Only the dog has registered who get like X-ray in Germany then later or get like the, the X-ray sent in. So otherwise you don't see at all the offspring named. Uh -huh. So maybe they have like $1,600, uh, 1600 uh, dogs offspring. And I just mentioned Quartz, there's Leon. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I think like, they see like Quartz is for sure, Quartz is for sure for me, a special dog, you know, Leon was a really good dog. Didn't have like the, the obedience behavior. That's also the reason there was never a video of him in obedience, you know. <laughs> but then it's like Trojan, you know, for sure, like a big impact. Trojan by himself for me was maybe, it was a really good dog, right? For sure not first pick for me in the tea litter, right? was for sure Terror, the one was like way more explosive like, and, and, and more the dog I liked, you know. But, but breeding wise, Trojan had like a really big impact on the breed. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of offspring on championships, on the world championships. But like breed wise, for sure, Quades, uh in the last decade, for sure the best one, I, I would say. And what we'll do guys, cause I know some of you guys can't, you, you got no clue what we're talking about. We're gonna put the actual dog below when we speak about the dog, just like the, the, the pedigree information of the dog. So people can see the dog and, and have an idea who we're actually talking about. It was Quartus, Quartus was born in your kennel. Yep, yep, Did 2008. You, did you keep him as a puppy? Quartus was, yeah. He was like a while with me and then he came to, to Nico. There was a deal because, so the story with Quartus is, I met Nico, Nico was the handler of Quartus later. Nico is the dead agent and the dead of agent Justin. And Nico was a world champion last year. Was where, Nico the world champion the year before you gave him Quartus? No, he was like, no, no, no. He was like with agent on the BSP already. And then on the Worlds. Okay. Uh, on the Worlds with agent. Agent yeah. Vom. Wolfsheim. Wolfsheim. Really good breeder in Germany too, yeah. Okay. Awesome kennel. Really good breeder. So the arrangement was with Nico, like he would get like the, the male and the female from the litter. Was only two puppies, so he'd cut them both. Uh, Quas was a while with me, then he go to Nico, and then at this time Nico's uh, better half or worse half, you could say today, raised the dog, tried to handle him, but was too much, you know. So so was early like early takeoff from Nico already early, I think like aged by like eleven or twelve months, whatever. He already was handling the dog. Nico already like was on the BSP with uh, Justin. Justin Bob Pandelbach. Pandelbach, right? He was with yeah. him, vice winner. A junior winner and then he was with Justin on the world championship one time I think in Italy I'm not sure and then he got like out of Justin and Nodita Teufelsgrund great female from Kendall Walsheim great producing female he got agent agent was like smaller dog bad color you know like like female head but crazy behavior you know he came to me training since the dog was six months old and like in all the years training with me I never saw the dog like one time in a weak moment, you know? Agent von Wolfsheim. Yeah, really like great drive behavior, great hardness, great grip behavior, consistent obedience behavior, you know? Environmental safety is outside, you know? But then again, the dog by himself was not a looker, you know? Many people, what make me upset, didn't recognize the quality of this dog, you know? Because he wasn't good looking. No, at this time there was another dog, a big black brown one, I don't say the name because other people get so, so offended, you know, about it. Drago Van Patriot? Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was being like a champ at his time, right? Big dog, super big dog, huge dog, you know? Yeah. Under normal circumstances, if you would bring the dog to the, show, show, uh, to, the, to the breed survey, they would say, go home. I mean, a huge dog, right? Oversized, whatever. He, he breed like, I don't know, like 300 times and the offspring was like not there and still not there. But agents the opposite, right? Small dog, ugly as fuck, right? <laughs> But yeah. produced like a champ, you know, produced like a champ, you know, you have like so many kids on the BSP, you know, and then Quartus as a, as a top, you know, where they say like, that's a share on the cake with Quartus then producing Debbie later, right? Or Dexter or Fight, you know, all win the US championship and the 
later like the world championship com competitor was like Dexter, Dina, uh, Debbie won, Dina was on the BSP like two or three times, I think. So it's like producing wise already like, like crazy. And, and but it's funny because I, uh, I seen Quartus and he's not, if he's a son of, he's a son of agent. Right. But he's not an ugly dog. No, he's a very looking dog. Big, oh, nice yeah. bones. Because he had a great mom, right? So like, you must see like, Quartus comes from like, like, like Grazia, right? Grazia was like, uh, Ulrich Zavazori, gorgeous looking dog, you know? At the time, Ulrich Zavazori, I think 2002, three, four, five, this dog was ahead of the time, you know? When you saw the dog in the stadium, you say like, man, this dog was ahead of the time, you know? There was like other great dogs too, but Olex was for me like where I say like, man, a dog is like ahead of the time, you know? Great, great optic, great movement, great speed, good grip behavior, everything, you know? And Grazia was a son of him, you know? Gorgeous looking dog, and Grazia by herself, you know? Super round head, you know? Super dark sable, good bones and everything by herself, extreme fast, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, that comes the benefit of like agent with Grazia where we get like Quartus out, and Quartus produced like a lot of good looking dogs on the end, you know? Yeah, yeah, he's a good looking. Absolutely, yeah. Very, like very nice bones and yeah. nice size. Everything's... Yeah, really good good build. I mean, yeah. I think I, I think in, in pounds on the top, maybe when he was like fully trained and, and maybe by four years, I guess he was for sure like 82 pounds, 85 pounds for sure. Mm -hmm. Because of muscle, what he had, muscle mass and bones and head. Yeah, good yeah. size for a working dog. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was, um, is he still alive? No, he's like, just gone. How old was he? Um, just like 15 now. Yeah. 15. That's crazy for a German yeah. Shepherd to live 15 years. Yeah. But it's Terror's the normal. same, right? Terror's the same, right? Terror, Terror just like, also just left, you know? So I went, I went, the first time I met you in person was when I brought a female to breed to Terror. And um, that's the first time I met Stefan because uh, I wanted, I'd, I'd seen videos of Terror and I seen like the pet, I liked the pedigree and I'd seen some puppies from Terror and I thought, I thought he was fairly good. So I went to, to breed him. I think he was like 12 years old. Yep. And he was like just a little bit of gray. Yep, absolutely. And like he didn't look, you know, sometimes old dogs, they look a little like they went through the washing machine. Like he's like, no, he looked perfect. Like he looked perfect health, everything was tight. I think I had like luck over the, over the mother line. So every dog in my kennel, right, comes from one, from one, one foundation female, Orla, right? Orla von der Schiff Schiffslaffel. Schiffslaffel, right. Everything over her, right, was really like long living, you know, like, like Larry, I think he was like 12, no, I think he was 14 already. Like, I think Larry was like 14 years and two days or whatever, you know? Terror, like, like, like 15, quarters 15, you know, it's like all like crazy ages, you know, it's like, that's, that's all of herself. I think she was, she turned 11, Franca, uh, all her daughter, I think she was also like 11 or 12, you know, so I'm really, really lucky with the, with the health of these dogs and, and longevity. Yeah. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just wanted to take a quick second to mention some of the awesome online training courses that we have available at shieldk9online.com. Whether you have a new puppy, a behavior problem, or you just want a really well-trained off-leash dog, check out our Shield K9 online course portal today. So I think one thing that's really interesting um, about you is your breeding program for sure has produced consistently for a long time. And it's not like a lot of breeding programs, if you look at it, you see a lot of very like scattered kind of you know, breeding and they say it's a breeding program, but really it's just constantly bringing dogs, putting them together. And it's not like so much of a structured step-by-step -step program where they're trying to really set a type and make a type. And I think your program does that. I think my, the, the, the thinking about that, you know, come from when I was younger, I had like race pigeons, you know, I don't know, most people don't know that, but it's like the big thing, race pigeons, you know, it's big money and you know, is like all over the world, you know, they pay big dollars for fast pigeons, you know, it's yeah. like extreme. So in like in Germany, there are Germany, Holland, Belgium, they're really like many successful breeders for race pigeons and they all go with the same way. They start like with a foundation, right? And they go in the foundation, out cross the foundation, right? Birds go back in, inbreed, go back out, inbreed, go back in and out, right? It's like, it's like when you watch, it's like a, like a tree, right? The, the, the stump is really sick, right? Yeah. That's where it's all come from. And then it goes like brush out, but on the top it goes back together, right? And then it goes like wider later, right? That's like, I think that's like how breeding should be, right? You need a female where you start with, a foundation female, and that's where you start and you put like different males to it and you must keep offspring by yourself or by trusted people, right? Trusted people means like someone where you can see how they train you have access to because if you sell a puppy, let's say like to BC, 
from like we are now here in what is it, Ontario. Ontario. Ontario, we sell a puppy to BC, and you call the people, how's the puppy doing? And people say, like, oh, it's the best puppy I ever had. It might be true, the best puppy what they ever had, right? But the quality might not even there, but the people don't know. Yeah. So for you as a breed, it's important to see and work your own offspring to see the quality and the negative things what came out. If you don't train your own dogs, how do you know what's good or bad? It's wild to me. There's a lot of uh, people breeding that don't train their own dogs. That's, you know, I think like the, the, the biggest risk is like in breeding is like that you believe someone would sell you a good breeding female after three, four litters and think you get the next big thing, right? I don't believe in that. If you have a great producing female, you know, it's like gold. You keep her. Yeah. Or you must be in the money game and say, you know what? The guy offered me like 20 grand, maybe I sell her for 20, 20,000 dollars because in Germany, I don't know. Right now, puppy price is maybe like $1,500 in Germany. I don't know for sure. Normal puppy price, right, for sure, from the top female, way higher. But for normal female, $1,500 maybe. To reach like 20K, right, you need only like, like 12, 14, 15 puppies, you know? Some people are willing to sell a good female for 20K. A bad female you can buy for like six, seven bread. Yeah. Bread to the favor of the months. Yeah. But what, what do you really get? Yes. What do you get? Something that you don't want really. So I think it's the most important part that you start with the right foundation female and you go from there, right? So you're a, you're a big believer in the mother line? Oh, absolutely. That's the most important part. Yeah. So like, that's why I bought the, um, I contacted you for um, that puppy bang. You guys know my puppy bang, yep. or maybe you don't, but she's on the YouTube channel because I bought her for the mother line. Absolutely. Great because mother line. the mother line goes all the way back um, to your dog, Grazia. Yep. Absolutely. And, uh, Debbie, Nitra. Yep. The, the, the like, good thing in your in the in the female for sure when you see like how she's bred, you know, there's many many great producing females in the pedigree, you know, and you you open the pedigree, you know, and you say like, man, great dog, great dog, great dog, great dog, you know, it's like many pedigrees you, today you see you say like, oh, they're like many nice dogs, but there's also like a lot of shit in there, right? Yes. But with your female, you you open the pedigree, you say like, man, it's like, it's a paradise, right? Yes. On the end. That's the most important part. The dog must still work like the pedigree shows, you know? Yes. That's what people forget. They buy today a dog or a puppy somewhere, you know, with a great pedigree, and they say, like, oh, this is the best, best breeding prospect for the future or the best litter for the future, whatever. But the dog will never reach the level of the pedigree. Yes. If you have this... There's some bad genes in there. Right, and you, you must outsource it, right? You, you give it away, right? It's like yeah. someone else may be happy with that, but for breeding, you don't want to breed with that. Why? Because it will not reproduce. Yeah. There's like, there's something bad in there. It cannot come out anymore, you know? Well, it's funny. I bought that puppy like the second, it's funny. I watched, I didn't buy it because Nitra won. Like for instance, like no offense to the guy who won Worlds this year. It was like really nice performance. But when I watch his performance, I don't say, oh, I need a puppy from this dog. But when I watch Nitra's performance Absolutely. and I saw the bitch and I saw how she did everything, I said, oh my, this is a bitch. Absolutely. Like this is a female that is a special female. And I said, I need a puppy. And I didn't even know, to be honest, I had the puppy like four months in my possession. I didn't know the name of the male that she came from. People say, what's the father? I said, to be honest, right. I don't know. I didn't buy for the father. I bought for the mother. I said, this is from Nitra. I don't know about the father. And that's, that's a good you example, know? right? Yeah. There was a sister, right? And, and, and the breeder owned both females, right? Mm -hmm. And at like age, whatever, like, I don't know. I also want to ask at which, which, what age she saw it, but there was clear that the one is a way better one and he sold the other one. I mean, it was, was a clear. Yeah clear thing right so that's the reason he kept the one as i don't have go you know why because the quality difference and the quality difference will, will for sure prove itself in the reproduction you will see that it's like with every time the same when you think back like for example many people know like remember nick heiligen bush yes great producer right super nice dog you know also like explosive dog for the time right and then there was a super nice brother good looking brother you know nuts work wise not even like 30% of Nick. But someone bought him because Nick was famous, right? So they bought the dog from somewhere and, and put him like in breeding. Some people bred with him, maybe because it was cheaper, maybe because he was darker sable and bigger, right? But on the end, the, 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 what the dog produced was nothing compared to Nick, you know? Nick today still to find like in, I don't know, for sure like 
50,000 pedigrees. I mean, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. No so doubt. you're saying it's important, regardless of what the pedigree says, the dog has to meet the standard of the pedigree? Absolutely. Or it's probably not going to produce. Right. There's two options, right? You see a dog working, right? That's like, that's what means a factum, right? So when I see like a dog in training or on a championship or whatever, right? I say, man, that's like a great dog, right? They have like this wow effect, you know? It's like, man, that's what I want, right? Like you said, with a female, right? For me, it's like, I call it the, the wow effect, you know? It's like, wow, I want that. So then you take the pedigree, open the pedigree, and you see the pedigree and say like, man, this dog is exactly what the pedigree shows. That's like what you want for breeding. The opposite would be, you see the dog, you say like, whoa, you open the pedigree and you say like, this dog cannot come from this pedigree because like this dog doesn't do this and, and the mom wasn't good enough, the grandpa wasn't good enough. This one dog is like, we call it like a one hit wonder. It's, it's random chance. Right, it's like yeah. a one hit wonder because the pedigree doesn't give it up. It's like, it's not there, you know? So f years ago, there was an example, there was this guy like, I think in Virginia, he makes like a lot of like detection dogs. Uh, Malis and whatever, like like mixed breeds. Yeah, I don't forget his name. But he imported like a dog from Camp PV, Lübeck from Malermeister. Oh yeah, I remember. Black him. yellow. So the guy imported me, made the video how he posted me. I said like I said the dog will not produce. And he's like he was all upset about it. You know, it was like also work dog forum, right? Yeah, yeah. I was really vocal about it. I say the dog will not produce. He cannot produce. On the father line, he was perfectly bred, right? Enoch's house Ming, right? Goes back to Nick Halligan Bush. I think it was also Yoshi in the mother in the in the father line. But then the mother line came like down to like like show dogs, German show dogs. Yeah. He by himself, right? He was hitting like a maniac, right? But like the pedigree was like was there that you can say like man. There was bad blood. The in there. show dogs in there, right? Recessive genes will come out, and then you maybe have like the the worst luck ever, and you have the whole box full of like four, five, six black and brown puppies that act like show dogs. Yeah. And it, it happens this way, you know, like barely any offspring of Lübeck Malamites where you say like, man, they come close to the dead, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. There are some dogs, though, that seem to like, I don't know, do you know this dog? Um, he's owned now by my friend, uh, Ann Lee. What's the dog's name? Uh, Irk. Irk. I don't, I can't even I pronounce. I only saw him on videos, I never saw him in person. So like a lot of people, let's be honest, a lot of people say said, not a lot of people, maybe some people, I shouldn't say a lot of people. Some people said, this is not a breeding dog. And I never really watched him, so I can't say what I would think, but I seen his puppies. It's good puppies. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see one tomorrow. Yeah. They're gonna see one tomorrow. It's good dogs, good speed, good grips, good activity, nice nerves generally. I think Erk by himself on the videos, what I saw, he looked good on the videos, you know? In mm. person, I never saw him in training or whatever. It's autumn, like, hard to say, really, you know? Yeah. The important part for sure when you breathe with a dog is, like, you won't see the dog in training, right? You won't see how the dog, like, like recovers from stress, right? From impact, right? Force on the dog. How does the dog recover? You know, that's a big part, you know? You don't see it in a trial. No. So if you go to train, you can see what they do with the dog, and the dog still like, looks like, like shining, you know? It's like that's what you want, you know? You want to see how the dog runs behind the ball and eats the grass, gets the ball, you know? Many times today, people throw the ball away, and the dog goes and picks up the ball, and they don't even like run grass in the mouse. I mean, it's like there's no desire to get the ball, you know? What I want to see with a good dog is like if you go, go behind the ball, the dog comes back with more grass in his mouse and ball, you know? Because the desire is there, the willing to, to get the ball, the, 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 the object, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's interesting, like, I, obviously you understand the pedigree a lot more than I do, but when you look at a dog like that, it's like, the pedigree's like all over. Yeah. It doesn't look like there was like a, a lot of like purpose in the pedigree, but obviously he's a producer. He produces. He produces really well, absolutely. Absolutely. I saw a few dogs online, again, like online, I saw one in person, all drive, drivey dogs, you know, I don't know yeah. about the hardness, you know, there was some younger ones, you know, but for sure, like one, two years will show on the championship the dog come or not come, you know. Yeah. Most time with a, with a male who breeds like four, five, six years, you know, you will see the offspring coming, you know. With show dogs, it's different, right? You see with like 12 months of offspring on these big shows. With working dogs, it's minimum like three, four, five years before you see offspring because it takes so much time to get them there. Or you have like really like a dog who's early on the championships, but most of the time it takes like really four, five years before you see like a, a wide band of dogs of the same, same, same male. Yeah, my buddy Ann, uh, he won the uh, Canadian Nationals with... Yep, I saw that. With, uh, I, th I don't think the dog's three. Yep. It's like two and a half years, that dog. Yep. And it was really it nice. was a nice performance. Fast bond? Bond. bond, yeah, bond. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, fast dog. And then there was a couple other people there with with that with dogs from him. 
That was it's an interesting dog for the from the breeding. So like obviously you're big on the mother line and I the results are what they are. Um, you know, it's it's impossible to kind of argue. Like we already know what 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 comes from that program and what what came from that program. But you also know like a lot of like the very famous you knew and met and worked with some of the most famous dogs obviously in the past absolutely uh was it croc you were i know I, I met croc when he was old i didn't work him but he was like i think he was like eight or nine when i met him mm -hmm. he was still alive so dogs like but this. i worked the, the sun joker like a few times yeah okay. but but croc was like i don't know for the time maybe he was a wild dog for this time right yeah his, his handler andrea super nice guy you know maybe we did, we wasn't smart enough at this time either way right training was like different at this time right sure Today, this dog would, would look different for sure with our training today, you know. But for sure, he was a hard-driven dog with, like, crazy behavior sometimes, you know. Yeah. Like oh, he's like a legend now. Maniac like, behavior. Like, oh, croc, croc. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly, he's, like, distinguished from most pedigrees, you know. He's gone less or more. I think those types of dogs are not easy for a lot of people. Yeah, I think they're gone mostly. I mean, many, many dogs of them are gone. What are some of the other dogs they use? I really, you know, for, for, for sure, my all-time favorite, Yoshi Dörlenwiese, right? Yoshi Dörlenwiese, for sure, like, like, prime example of a dog, you know? To go to this point, Yoshi Dörlenwiese, right, if, if without Jörg Sauer, right, Jörg Sauer is a trainer in Germany, right? Yeah. Really well known. Without Jörg Sauer, the German Shepherd breed worldwide would be different because Jörg Sauer had, like, so many dogs under his wings, you know, what he got from people who could not handle them. He made them straight, you know? Yoshi Dörlenwiese, Setos Grem. Oleg Silversori, Tyson Schiffslacher, for example, you know. That's, that's a, only that's, that's a hell of a lot of names. Those that's are only big the names. names. That's only the names like where you say like they are known as top producer, right? But then there are many other dogs, you know, where he trained trained with the people, make them straight, you know. Is where you where 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 you say like man, without Jörg, this dog would have never come anywhere because this dog would have like sit in a kennel somewhere, would never make one breeding, but Jörg fixed the problems or or make the dog straight because he made them straight, you know. I mean it's like by making them straight, you mean he trained them? He made them, them straight, right? <laughs> he made them straight that they must accept a punishment, you know? That's like, that's today the biggest thing for sure. People don't understand, right? If a dog doesn't accept a punishment, how can you train a dog? Yes. But Jörg is for sure the best in this area to make a dog where other people say, like, he's not able to perform at a good level. He makes them straight for a good level and he shows them a good level. And then this dog suddenly, like, turned into his top producer, you know? Like... Like, like I just mentioned, you know, Oleg Vazori, Yoshi Dörling, with the Sithos Grimm. Yeah. I mean, Tyson von Schiffslach, every, all the dogs with like, like crazy behaviors, you know. So just to clarify, because I know some people will be uh, confused by that statement. When you say accept the punishment, you mean accept pressure. You must do it. You must You see, like, you like many dogs, it. right? Many dogs, and for sure we, we took our, not personal us now, but like over all the community, like, you know, with like introducing e-colors like early, right? And like in the beginning, remember, like was like the little Inotex, you know, the small e-color e Inotex, that like this one button yeah, only. Yeah, 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 And I think it was only like constant, I don't know. So we teach like already early, like stronger dogs, like to to bite on e-color force, right? So it means like we corrected them over the e-color, right? Most of them on constant for sure, on a too high level, and the dog reacted with like, panic mode and biting you, right? And yes. what do you do when you push the button? What do you do when the dog bites you? You, let, you let the button go, right? Less or more, you, you teach the dog like, like a force biting, right? Like, like you do today like a force retrieve yeah. or a simulation, right? You teach the dog a force bite. It means like, you know what? I push the button, I bite you, it stops, right? And this was the dogs like many stronger dogs reacted this way. And then it was not anymore to handle, right? For normal people. Yeah. And for sure, Jörg was a, is or was the expert to get this dog straight easily, you know? I mean, I, I saw many times in person, it's like, for sure, one of the best ever, right? For sure, when people say like, some are underrated and forget about like, like because he did, he bred a few letters of, I think the kennel was Hearts Off or Hearts Tor. As a breeder, he's not known, right? But as a person, he influenced the German Shepherd breed in the last 25 years extreme. Without him, it would meet his way. Like, like just when people say like, oh, without Staatsmart, it would be, wouldn't be this way today. You're right. But again, before me, right, it was a Jörg Sauer who made like Oleg Zavazori clear. He makes like Yoshi Dörnwiz clear. He makes like um, Sitos Grimm clear, you know, that they can get, get trialed. Without trialing, these dogs would never have bred. People wouldn't know them. 
They wouldn't know that because yeah. they, they would sit somewhere in the, like a little dog club, you know, bites a handler every time. They say like, oh, I'm done with the dog. I give him to a farm or to a junkyard. No, you know, he's also potentially bought him for a little money and he brings him to the top, you know. So I think a lot of people, when they hear about these types of dogs, and this is why I always laugh because sometimes I'll say, you know, oh, this dog's like extreme, you know, he's chewed up some people. This dog's probably interesting for breeding. And people say, why would you breed a dog like that? Why would you use a dog that they could do something like that or would do something like that? I think people forget that like, like, how you call it? We can call it dominance, right? Let's say like a nice word about it, it's like dominance, right? Sure. So if a dog doesn't have the dominance to say, you know what, that is my food. This is my bitch, this is my ball, this is my sleeve, this is my bed, this is my crate, my kennel. If a dog doesn't have this, this dominance anymore, and the dog is willing to give like everything away without a fight, and he produce only 60% of himself, we get like weaker and weaker and weaker dogs, right? So let's, for mm -hmm. example, let's talk about like e color use, right? There's a dog, he goes on a level 50, and he's already dying, right? He says like, oh, that's too much for me, right? People yeah. bre breed with him. The so offspring is already like by level 25 already done. Why? Because he produced them by himself only with like 60%, maybe or 40%, they got softer and softer. So if you breed with this maniac, you know, where people say like, oh, he's crazy. No, he's not crazy, he's only dominant. He's like a male, right? He's a real male. He yes. demand his food, he demand his ball. If you say this dog is 100% quality, 100%, and he produced only 70%, the 70% are still good enough to win, the, to win the championship. Yeah. But the 100% is a dog you want to breed with. Why? Because you need the dominance in the breed. Otherwise, it gets like less and less and less. Mm -hmm. Why? The dog gets softer, less food behavior. Food drive is a big factor, right? Food drive. Many dogs just get less and less food drive. Why? Yeah. If you have a male who is eating and you go and take the food away there, and he doesn't even like tell you he doesn't like it, there's not enough food drive for me. Yes. A food drive should be enough, you know, you put the football in there, you walk out, that's what we do, right? We put the football down and we walk away, right? I don't fuck around with it. Yeah. But I promise you, Quadis or Terror or whatever else, they accept you come in and put the football down, but in this moment the door is closed. It's his. It's his. Mm -hmm. And you don't go in there and take it away. The same as the breeding behavior, right? If there's female in the building for breeding, he breeds the female if she wants or not. The female can buy them, they would take them upside down, he still would breed her, but that's the dominance you need for breeding. Because without this dominance, the, the breed gets weaker and weaker and weaker. And that's like today the, the biggest issue for sure with like the modern kind of training. We are so advanced in training that people don't see the difference anymore in like artificial behavior and real behavior. I think, I think that's where we get into the topic of like, oh, you know, because obviously IGP, the training, like you said, it's very advanced, very modern training Absolutely. versus like maybe a sport like KNPV where they still are very like heavy handed. Absolutely. And that, that program has produced a lot of police dogs very consistently. I can tell you, I lived like on the Dutch border in, in Germany, right? Like for me to the Dutch border was like five minutes. So I visited many times KNPV clubs, right? And it's like, I mean, like early 2000s, you know? I can tell you, man, it was like training there was like training dogs, right? It's like they was hanging out all there. The dogs was tied up outside on a pole, you know, like 15, 20 dogs. They take him off, they, they, they make healing. Man, the healing was not healing. The healing was like, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, man. <laughs> Most of them, they had like a stick in the hand or like the leash over their shoulder and they said yeah. like, they said like, Folger and, and better you do it. Otherwise... <laughs> Crack. There was like there was like jumps with like like big wires on it and and anything else you can imagine you know. But, they didn't touch the jump. But <laughs> these dogs, right? These dogs was like for sure like hard hard dogs, you know. Yeah. And they only bred with the hard dogs because anything else didn't survive there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's like sadly to say, but it's the truth. But you that's know? for working dogs. Absolutely. Would you want a working dog or do you want a pet dog? Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. This is well, it's interesting because like you know Carson's dog, you worked with uh, his dog Vasco. Uh, last time we came with you and you know he has some extreme behavior and it's interesting what you said like the extreme end of drive it culminates in fundamentally resource guarding behavior absolutely because we always view resource guarding as it's terrible it's bad it's bad and for sure it's hard to live with a dog that resource guards but if the dog resource guards his ball his space his food this is an extreme expression of the drive that we actually need for work absolutely 
I often give a good example for people, you know, at training, you know, when, when the dog is like fighting them or whatever, you know, and I say you must make the dog comply, right? The dog must comply, right? You must find a way the dog complies, right? It's like, I give an example, for example, I say, okay, you own a business. You get a new employee. The employee walks in and you tell it to the guy, hey, you know what? You must empty this garbage bin today. And the guy said, fuck you and fuck you and push you around, whatever. And he said, no, no, you work for me. You must bring the garbage out. And the guy pushed you around. Can you work with him on this level or must you put the guy in his place and say listen man rules are get followed here and you must do it yeah in a society right with like a workplace you would say you know what you are out in the old times they would kick his ass yeah beat him up and he would like happily do it right but with a dog it's important part to understand a dog has his own mind right a doctor thinks most of the time to better his own position his or her own position if a dog doesn't want to give the ball away you must make the dog understandable. You must give up because I tell you to give it up. As long as you fight about that, we cannot move forward. So the first step is make clear you understand the rules and the rules are black and white. Good example is like you put food down and you say to the dog, eat a little bit. What is the dog doing? Does he eat a little bit or does he eat all? Not black and white, right? It's like the dog eats everything because right. for the dog it's black and white. For the human says like eat a little bit, would be the gray area, right? But mm -hmm. the dog would eat everything. So for the dog, it's like, I want to keep it, or I don't want to keep it, but you must make the dog clear. If I say, go down and spick it out, you better do it. If you fight me for that, I must be consistent in my correction in the consequence to do the right thing. That's really important, right? No consequence, no behavior change. Yes. If the doctor does something wrong, there must be consequence. If you, uh, your employee does something wrong, there must be consequence. If not, they don't change. Same mm -hmm. with the dog. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think what people are doing now with the breed, and I'm sure you've seen it already, is that they're saying, well, I don't want to make consequences. I, wanna, I don't want to do the hard thing, so I'm going to make, and I'm going to breed, and I'm going to train with softer dogs, that the consequence, the, you, there still must be a consequence, but you can delude yourself and say, oh, it's not so bad, because you say, hey, stop it. And the dog's like, oh, okay, I'll stop. But this dog is just literally, you've just made a dog, you just went from a dog that maybe he needed a physical consequence to now you can just make a, 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 a firm, you know, verbal correction. It's the same exact thing from the dog's perspective, but you're dealing with a much weaker dog now Absolutely. versus a stronger Absolutely. dog. Absolutely. Compliant dogs that are willing to give things up easier. The question should be, why would be any breeder interested interested to breed a dog like this? Why would you be willing to, to put the standard so low that you say, you know what, I get one dog who maybe works out for the sport, you know, with like normal corrections and the rest either way doesn't work out, right? It's like, I think it should be the target for the people to say like, you know what, I hope for the one, for the one special in the litter, for the one special one and the rest is good enough to compete on every, every level. Yes. Because when you see like today people advertise like, oh, um, uh, how you say it, like promising, uh, promising combination will be good for this agility, will be good for this, for this and this. It should be say, you know, like good German Shepherd or good Malinois. With good German Shepherd, good Malinois, you should know, you know, when I say good, it is good. Yes. But all the description, you know, when I say like, oh, maybe it's good for this, but it's not good for the, for the, for the top level. No, 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 no. You breed a German Shepherd, with the, with the traits of a German Shepherd or a Malinois with the traits of a Malinois. But why often try to breed a German Shepherd with the quality of the Golden Red Reaver? Yes. That's the biggest point, right? You want to breed a German Shepherd, you breed a German Shepherd. Well, I think, um, and, and we can talk about where we think the sport's going, um, but I think what they're doing is they're slowly changing the sport. They're changing what's acceptable versus not acceptable. And then what happens when you change that is the breed changes. And... I'm waiting for the time when it's possible for, you know, some girl to take her golden retriever to a nationals or to a, to a international championship and potentially podium. Because if you keep changing the sport, you keep changing the judging, you keep changing what the, what, what we're looking for and what we deem to be acceptable in the, in the guarding and the biting phases and everything else. And in the pressure phase, then ultimately there's no reason why you can't, some girl can't take her golden retriever nicely trained to a, to a podium. 
for sure there's a shift in the rules again, right? Where they change the rules a little bit, like like. But when you start like I'm like in 1990, right? Mostly the I should run one at this time was like on leash, right? You could like put the put the dog on the leash, dragging out of the blind, you know, sure. healing to the escape, but it wasn't really healing less or more. You take the leash off again, you know, the owls wasn't really owls. The dog could circle the decoy or other stuff, you know. Was the quality of dogs good there? Some was good, some was not good, you know. But I think today the training asks more from the dogs, right? Today the training. Today the, or the, today the rules are more from the dogs than in the past, right? The correctness, the, the straightness, you know, like stress signs, for example, you know, like in the sit down stand, you know, you say sit, must walk away. They judge you like a whole great down. The dog shows like stress signs in the sit position or down position. It's like, oh, the dog shows stress, you know, you go down, right? It's like, mm -hmm. I think it will be not impossible for off-breeds to, to compete on a level, but it will be not easy, right? I agree with you as it stands now. Right. But I'm not talking about now. I'm talking, I mean, now we know. You can have the best trained golden retriever. Maybe he has, like, he can do some bite work, some club level stuff, but you're not going to nationals and you're not going to international trials. Right. But keep changing it. I give you an example, right, with, with changing, right, going downhill, right? And that's like what Germany for sure fucked all you up like years ago, right? When the E-Keller band comes through, like Pinch Keller band, whatever, mm -hmm. you know? Dog people or like IGP people, Schutzen people, maybe Ring and Mondio, maybe PSA people, they all think by themselves like of the cream de la cream in dog training, right? And it's like what they say and do and like all their their post, you know, with like we are IGP, whatever bullshit, you yeah, know? Yeah, that was bullshit. bullshit. When you yeah. think, if you want to change something, right, in the dog community in the US, who has the most power in the US? Which people have the most power in the US? In, in, in view of, of laws and regulation. Congressmen, senators, yes. governors. Most of these people do what? Hunt. Yes. They have hunting dogs. Yes. You don't hear any screaming about hunting dogs, E-Keller use, you don't hear that. No. Why not? Because many of the former presidents, congressmen, senators, governors, big mayors, they all have hunting dogs with a hunting bird dog trainer, right? They all use E-Kellers, but you don't hear anything about that. If the IGP community would be smart, and I mean smart would be in this moment all the organizations, right? Or they think they're all smart, right? They're not this smart. They would, would start to connect with the hunting dog community and find a way to communicate together and find some influence on a high level in Congress or in the Senate. Well, we know how, how to influence government. It's been done. You know, that's why all the uh, the animal rights charities that make millions of dollars every year in charitable donations have the ear of government because they're at the galas, they're lobbying government. Absolutely. They have people that are literally paid full time to be with the government and to be talking to those congressmen. What, what do you think governments. if like, if you tell like, let's say like, If you tell a governor he can have any more, like his hunting dog trained by the expert with the e color he says, like, you're fucking out of your mind. Yeah. I need my dog for, for the duck hunt, duck hunt or for the bird hunt or whatever. Yes. They don't, they don't pass a law if it hits themselves. Of course not, yeah. But our community is not willing to make the step. They are so selfish thinking that they are like the cream of the, or the like cream. They don't see further. And the same happened in Germany. Yeah. In Germany, you must see in Germany, the hunting community is even, even more different, right? In Germany, it's not so much private land. It's like everyone who is, who's hunting there less or more is wealthy, right? Yes. The dog world in Germany or dog sport world never hooked up with the hunting community because they said like whatever, you know, the hunting dog community, whatever is like under their standard or whatever. They never found a way to hook up with them and maybe make a change or try to make a change. The all time go like online bullshit, whatever no one cares about. You can post like 15 times via IGP. It doesn't change anything. No. You need like the right people in the right position to make like like promises yes. or changes. I agree, and I, it, it's funny as somebody that does social media a little bit. I've said this. I've said it over and over again. You will never change IGP on a Facebook group talking to other people that do IGP. That's that's the stupidest thing I ever Absolutely. heard. But we have this mentality in the sport that a let's hide. Let's hide because people can't see what we're doing. If they see, they won't understand. They'll be upset, blah, blah, blah. So we don't tell our story. We, and when you don't tell your story, guess what? Someone else tells your story. Absolutely. And you might not like the story they tell about you. Absolutely. That's number one. 
And in this world of social media, you know, IGP training is really cool stuff. It's, it's really cool stuff. The things that they do with the dogs, the, 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 the amount of dogs in the IGP um, uh, gene pool that end up becoming police dogs, uh, search dogs, uh, detection dogs, all the, all the utility that the sport actually brings to the real world, all the, the, the uh, and I'm going to say at top of the, probably the best training in the world when it comes to dog training, you will see an IGP. I don't think you'll see it really anywhere else to that level. I think when you, when you watch like, for sure like in like, in the wide spectrum for sure with striking obedience and bite work, but when you watch like today, um, obedience trials, you know, with like, like especially in Italy, there are some really experts, you know, obedience trials is like, what they can do with a dog is extreme, you know? I mean, like, a stand, distance stand out of full speed, whatever else is like, I mean, it's like crazy. Sure. For sure, there's no tracking involved and no bike involved, but what they, what these people can do in obedience is like, it's for, it's mind blowing for me, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like where we have trouble to send the dog away for a send away with a fast down, they make a send away with a stand or whatever else they get taught to do, you know? It's like crazy, you know? Well, they're using border collies. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <there's> like, <laughs> I, and I'm not denying that the skill is, is certainly not there, but I think in IGP, you see it on a spectrum. For you sure. see the obedience, you see the tracking, you see the bite work. Those are three very different things. I think IGP had, had like this, this, how do you say the right word? Like, a, like addiction. You know, IGP is like you start doing it, you love it or you hate it, yes. but you get addicted to it, you For know? For sure. And it's like, it's like, some people find their like their 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 freedom or their peace in it to do it. You know, it's like for all for them. You know, they can go trekking in the morning. You know, it's for them relaxing. You know, they make obedience. Their social aspects, the dog clubs, whatever. You know, for other people, it's like less or more like like a challenge. A challenge to be the best, right? Yes. And you must you must differentiate with the people, right? It's like if someone only does it for like like social um, how we call it the right word social togetherness mm -hmm. that you like hang out together and train together and mm -hmm. you have fun with that mm -hmm. fine with me you know yes you don't must go to the championship if you like training your dog and do it the right way and and you're not abusive to the dog and 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 everything looks nice you know i'm fine with that and the opposite you know if you want to go to the championship only train for that i'm also fine with that you know but for me it's autumn the point like there must be a reason to do it right yeah social aspect or the oriented to the top aspect Yes. I think there's nothing in between with people in, in, in IGP. No, I think, I think if you're in between, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I think, so like getting back, because I think it's important that we talk about the, um, the dog sport acts, aspect, like how can we bring the sport forward and, and this nonsense with the Facebook groups that we are IGP group and all this idiocy. It's like, you're right. I mean, it's pretty simple. We already know what to do. And you've seen a lot of other associations and sports do it. You form an association. The association, everybody donates some money. The clubs all give money. Anybody who competes gives money. There's donations. And guess what? You hire some full-time lawyers to go and lobby the government. And anytime they try to pass a new law, guess who shows up? The hunting dog and dog sport uh, association shows up. Absolutely. The lawyer's in the, in the galas. He's in the, the ball, the charity ball. He's in the... He's in the office of the guy. Hey, man, you know, like, and this is how things are done. Mm -hmm. People want to pretend it's not done like that. That's how it's done. Oh, for sure it's done. Absolutely. That's yes. the way it's done. For sure. It's easy. And like I said before, you know, many governors, senators, congressmen, they go all hunting. They love the hunting dogs, you know? Yeah. They love it. That's like the partner where you, where you want, you know, you want these people. You don't want anyone who's hiding around the corner and says like, it doesn't, it, it it doesn't affect, affect me. me yes. It doesn't affect me because I do it like secretly. No, it affects no. you because if it's done, it's done. When it's done, it's done. And then you're a criminal. Yeah, when it's done, it's you're, done. You're officially a criminal for training your dog. It's crazy because if you, um, not only that, I mean, in this age of social media, you can control the message. Absolutely. It's, social media is extremely powerful and people really, I think a lot of the... IGP, there's a lot of older people involved in IGP, let's face it. I think probably at least half of them are over 60 years old. I don't know. Maybe that's extreme, but I, I would say. So maybe social media they're not so familiar with. And they're more of the mindset of let's just hide everything and people won't understand and we can't say anything. And then hopefully they leave us alone. Of course, this doesn't work. But instead, what they should be doing is they should be aggressive with social media. This is what we do. This is why we do it. You know, control the message. 
don't allow other people to absolutely. control the message. Absolutely. But that's, I mean, obviously that's your opinion. That's my opinion. But the people, the powers that be in the, in the sport don't agree for the most part, it seems. So I think you saw like in Florida with like the, the, the race dog Ben, right? I think it was oh, in Florida, yeah, right? Yeah, the yeah, the greyhounds. No one said like it would like happen there and you see suddenly it's gone, you know, it's gone. Just gone, like it's gone. overnight, gone. Yeah, it's gone. All the people said before, oh, it will never happen, it will never happen. It's gone. Yes. It's gone. It's yeah. Now it's too late, you know, now yeah. it's too late. You know, it's funny, you're talking about the crazy laws in Germany, but like, you know how many people, uh, you know, I, I post all these videos and stuff and there's always some girl from Europe coming oh, absolutely. on. Absolutely. In, in Germany, this is banned. We're mm. smarter trainers. I'm like, silly girl, who do you think taught me how to do this stuff? Right, absolutely. Some German guys taught me how to do this. In Finland, we don't do this. I'm like, oh, fuck, you oh, don't yeah, know. Okay. <laughs> I think, you see, like, you see, like, like these things in the videos, right? And I, I'm also 40 of that, right? When I was younger, right? And it's like, I posted videos on YouTube with, like, the dogs, you know, like, I'd like a puppy. I think it was a jay litter eight weeks old, you know, I let him bite on my sleeve, you know, I lift him up and take like a little like twitch, you know, but hitting with a twitch, you know, yeah, yeah. to make a show, right? For sure. Was it smart? I mean, it was like business by smart because people t start talking about the, about Staatsmann or about the kennel, was yes. it good or bad, we were talking about it. In, in hindsight, it was maybe not smart because you open the door to people who shouldn't see that, right? Like, let's say like activist people, right? They see that video and say like, They're all fucked up what they do with the dogs. Yes. Mm. The question is all time, why would we post views at all what can be seen in different ways not beneficial to us? I think if you must put like force on the dog, but the dog shows heavily impact, people should be smart enough not to post it. If you put a dog on a, on a bike work table, right, and everything looks like nice and smooth on the bike work table, Perfect, fine, right? But, but if you push the dog off the table, the dog is like hanging, yeah, hanging no. <laughs> on there, and you post the video still, and you open the door to people and say like, "Oh, you see what we can do?" It's like not smart. Why? Because suddenly, like this one person who does it, yes, fucks up the rest. I think again. So I'll slightly disagree with you here. Obviously, there's extreme examples. Like you talk about pushing a dog off a bite work table. Yeah, that's probably not something you should be showing to people. But in this day and age, you literally, I, I, I posted a reel that got some fair play. It was a, just my dog doing a sit in motion and he was wearing an e-collar. I didn't use it. Oh, everybody, take off the e-collar. How are you using the e-collar? He was just wearing it. I never used it. Nowadays, you don't have to actually use it. People just see it right away. Ba, 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 ba. I, think, I think the problem is too many dog trainers are always posting the perfect picture mm -hmm. and they're never showing the process. They're I, never showing what it takes to make that picture. I think you can show the, the, the way to do it, but I think you should really like be really smart about what you show to the people because today with social media, you post a video and some crazy person clips it for sure, takes it, makes a shortcut of it and says like yes. this guy so no. suddenly all the people who are associated with you yes fall in the same bucket and it goes like it's like a self runner you know and it's like it's like when I said like why are you so dumb you know for example like one of my old clients in Minnesota right she's like into into uh, Yark Terrier whatever you know and she yeah. was on a Yark Terrier fest and they put like the Yark Terrier on a, on a live raccoon right yeah so they show the video how the, how the Yark Terrier is like pulling the raccoon apart whatever in my head, you know, it's like, you know, you, you, it's, it's your thing what you do, right? It's like, it's like your hunt thing or whatever, you know, yeah. I don't know if it's right or wrong. But if you do it and film it, why would you open the door for a million activists who will share this video more and more? And then everyone who associates with you get pushed in the same, in the same draw. I agree. I think you have to show it in a smart way if you're going to show it. So Absolutely. like when I show pressure, when I show correction in my videos, I'll always make sure it's not just like there. Right. It's for sure in context. Could someone clip it? I don't know that I post anything that you'll be too helped if you, you clip. Are, you're too smart about it already. That's like a point. I don't know if I'm that smart, but... <laughs> but I, I don't want to hide that I do it though. I don't, I refuse to hide. Like a lot of trainers, they'll hide like, 
you know, like that they make pressure in protection no, or that they sure make pressure, pressure in, sure. in the obedience or something. It's like, no, I make pressure. This is life. This is training. I there, make pressure on myself too. There is a consequence for wrongdoing. If there's no consequence, there's no behavior change. It comes all to the same. You must put pressure somewhere in. It's like normal. Exactly. And I, I think a lot of trainers are, they're just showing like the easy, they, they take a dog, already trained, they have the clicker, they have the ball, the food, whatever, and they just make it look so smooth. It's unrealistic. It's not how it's going to go for that guy who's watching at home trying to copy. And then when he tries to copy, he's like, what the heck? It's not working. I'm not getting those reliable results. Okay, let me try something. And then he gets frustrated, maybe he gets angry at the dog or something like this. And then it's like, yeah, because it's not realistic training. They're just showing you a very like sanitized oh, version. Sure. Absolutely. People forget that there's like, maybe I'm, I'm clear about it, right? In my opinion, right? The dog must first learn the, the exercise, right? You must show the dog what to do, right? It's mm -hmm. like different ways to do it, right? I do it always food in the beginning. And then I reinforce everything, right? Every exercise must be reinforced. Positively or negatively. Absolutely. Yes. In both ways. It's the thing like every time after the negative reinforcement stops, there must positive either way follow, right? It's a clear thing. But too many people think today they can do it all in a positive way and we never reliable. It might be reliable in your garage, in your backyard, where there's no different odors, people walking by, different smell, impact of decoys, whatever, right? It might yeah. look good there, but in this moment you come like on a on a new in a new area and you didn't reinforce the behavior consistent. Yeah. You don't get the results you need. Yes. Well, it's, it's interesting because I remember I, years ago, like I got into an argument with um, back in the day when I actually used to bother to get into arguments with these people with a <laughs> force free trainer in Sweden. I said, listen, you can't even take your dog in public with no leash and just walk with your dog. You can't do it. She said, yes, I can. I said, okay, show me. So she sent me a video of her dog dragging a line and she had the food in her hand and she's luring the dog for like three minutes, just luring the dog. I said, that's not real training. You're just luring the dog. Put the food in your pocket, drink a coffee and walk. Oh no, you, you said I couldn't do it, I did it. It's like, no, you did it. You just lured the, I could take a five, I could take an eight week old puppy oh, right now sure. and do this. This isn't real training, but they trick people, you know, people Absolutely. think, oh yeah, that looks good. It's like, well, you're going to walk around with a liver treat in your hand like this or the ball when you need your dog to walk next to you. No, I, I'm on my phone. I drink my coffee. I walk with my dog. I think you know? everyone who ever watched like a, a litter of puppies grow knows there's a negative impact from the mom coming. Starts early, right? The mom is laying down. Puppies are born, right? The puppies come out, they, they, they start sucking, right? They drink, right? Four or five weeks, they have teeth in their mouth, right? And they start to hurt the mom, right? The mom correct them to stay away. Yes. They don't stay away because the mom asked to. Yes. No, the mom put like an impact there, a negative impact, right? Most times she snatched one time, right? Growls, it's done. Next time they come too close, she growls again, they come too close, snatched again, right? Why? To make clear you stay away. Later the same, right, with like seven weeks old puppies, right, we autumn feed our female in the kennel with the puppies, right, I put the food down, and the mom teaches the puppies to stay away. The mom eats, if the puppies yeah. come too close, the mom teaches them a lesson. Get away from my food. You stay away, how does it look? Yeah. Snatch them, throws to the corner, growls. It's like clear, right, the puppy yeah. learns social behavior. Yeah. There's a consequence for wrongdoing. What was the wrongdoing? I come close to the food bowl, you don't listen for my first warning, boom, here you get it. And you're gone. Next time is only the warning and the dog stays away. The puppy stays away normally. Some are dumb. They need like more, yeah, more control. Yeah, that's right. But, it's like, <laughs> but that's like the first thing when, when people should say, you know what? If you really would, would like go back to nature, right? Watch a mom what she does with the puppies. Yeah. There's your answer for everything. Yeah. There's a for answer for everything. And then it's like the biggest impact then when, when we talk about dog training, where people don't really think about like 90% of dog training should be like happen in non-verbal communication. Non-verbal. Why non-verbal? Because a dog lives in a non-verbal world. A mom is mostly to the puppies non-verbal, gives signals, body signals. Two dogs meet each other. Do they make really noise? Normally not. They, they, they charge up each other, head goes up, head goes down, ears back, ears forward, tail up, tail down, little lower position. Happens all without any noise most of the time. It's a non-verbal communication. But then we in training, we give the dog like non-verbal cues, they don't even fit to the exercise what we want. 
-hmm. Prime example, bug and hold. Prime example. So many people have like trouble bug and hold. How does a picture look for a dog on a trial picture? How does it look? How does the decoy look in the blind? Passive. Passive. Where's the sleeve? Across the body. Where's the stick? Uh, behind the right leg. Every time the dog must bite, where's the stick then? Uh, up. Remember that now, right? Yes. So the sleeve in front means what? Barking. Barking. The stick up means what? Bite. So why do you see so many people try or do, not intentionally, maybe because they think about it, put the sleeve in the back, bring the stick up, and bring the dog in a bark behavior? Because in this moment, the, stick, the sleeve comes in front, they create like a high prey behavior and the bark is complete gone. Or many people have the sleeve on the ground, stick is up, dog is barking, they pick up the sleeve, make like prey behavior, move left, 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 right, and let him bite. Do we not create a picture for the dog that says like every time the sleeve is in front, you must bark because you bite. But when the stick goes up, you bite. Uh, do you bark. bark? Yes. Think oh, about it. Oh. Think about a nonverbal communication, right? If you teach a dog... Think about it. If you teach a dog, sleeve in front, in the position how a bark and hold looks, you must bark. Every time the sleeve goes, you can charge me, right? Means like you can, can hunt me. Yes. Stick is up, you can hunt me, right? I must make movement, I run away, you can hunt me, right? But I come in the front, sleeve goes in the front, you must bark. That's a nonverbal communication we must give the dog, that the dog understands the exercise. Because what we, or what also I did in the past, was sure also wrong, right? Before I got smarter about that, If you can teach the dog, sleeve in front means barking. The picture to the bark and hold in the blind is so easy and stress-free compared to like, oh, sleeve goes on the back or on the ground and we go up with the stick more and more and we do more shit, we do more shit and the dog is barking like a maniac. In the moment the sleeve comes in front, we stop barking because we just teach you that. Think about it. Nonverbal communication. We must give the right, right communication to the dog, the right body language. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The same sense makes like the heel position. When you see like, you see enough people coming for training. I see enough people on the seminars, right? People say foos with the ball in the left hand hanging up, with the hand here, with the hand behind the head, with like whatever they do, right? People who are consistent behavior, when they say foos, the body tells the dog already before, We do foos. Why? Because the hand leg goes in the position, the arms go on the side, stay straight, and the dog knows where I must go. All these weird movements, you know, where people stay with like, like, like with the ball up here and this and all bullshit, you know, does not fit to the behavior you want. You're not consistent. And there's enough people, especially like in, in Czech Republic and in Germany, you can watch them with one dog and the dog before and the dog before and the dog before. If the dog wouldn't have a different color, you would think it's the same dog because the handling and consistent training is the same. The non-verbal behavior is consistent the same. Not by chance. Mm -hmm. The one guy, he had like autumn black and, black and brown dogs or black and yellow dogs, however you call it, you wouldn't, if, you, if they wouldn't would, would put a different name under the dog, you wouldn't even know it's a different dog because it looks all the same. But the guy is acting the same way, consistent. 100% consistent, 100% the same results. But we all times think we are smarter than anyone else and we try to make pictures that doesn't even exist. Stick up means what? Biting. Mm -hmm. Stick up means biting. Stick, stick down on the side means what? You bark. Sleeve in front, stick on the side means you bark. Stick up means you can bite. That's also the reason then when like over the time we see, say like, okay, I don't see many fast dogs anymore. Go and watch what people train. They cannot, cannot produce speed if the dog is autumn in a conflict to bark or to bite. When I train bark and hold, I don't send the dog for a long bite. Why not? Because the dog is in a bark mode the whole time. I work on the barking again and again and again and again and again, and the dog is in a bark mode. To send the dog for a long strike, I must first bring the dog back in which behavior? Biting. In a clear biting prey behavior, because the dog should do what? When it's hit like 60 yards down the field, the dog should put the crosshair on the sleeve and should run through. The dog shouldn't even care if there's a stick or not stick because the good dog either way doesn't care. Mm -hmm. But people do all the weird shit, you know, with like sleeve behind the arm, behind the, behind the back and running at the dog and, and, and like bringing the sleeve high up. 
How can the dog find like a clear target if you do all this bullshit? How can the dog create consistent speed if you do all this bullshit? Training is simple if you really think about it. If you really get clear about the nonverbal communication, that autumn's the same. Why do some trainers or helpers create consistent fast dogs? Because the training is consistent, shows the dog what to do. Why do some people consistent get uh, great bark behavior? Because they know the picture on the try looks this way and the sleeve on the ground doesn't make a great barking. It's great for a video. Sure, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I put a dog in a box, right, on a table. I put the sleeve on the ground and stay in the front of the table. And the dog barks at me, barks at me. You know what? It's great for a YouTube video. It's great for a boner for someone. And maybe great to get some chicks when I was younger. <laughs> But, but the picture, what you want for the trial, doesn't match what you do there. Why you waste your time on that? That makes sense. It, it makes, makes sense. absolutely sense. Yes. And it's like easy it to get there. Sense. You see like when you sing today, or like the last maybe two years or three years, when people started like with like, like throwing the toy out, right? From the hands and back for the bargain hold, right? Yeah. Throw the toy out. They throw the toy away or say yes and push the dog out or say, okay, walk, walk the dog backwards out, give him a bite from whatever, right? What is a common thing what they all do before they do the reward with the dog, before they give them the toy or the say ball? Say something. They say something. Compared to the old times, right? The old times we were standing in the blind and maybe let the dog reward for the bargain hold, we move the sleeve, right? Yeah. That was normal. Yes. Otherwise, how does the dog know how to bite if he doesn't move the sleeve? Yeah. What we all created, right, at this time was like, we call it like a prey lock, right? A prey lock. Because the dog was concentrating too much on the sleeve, right? The dog is like watching the sleeve. Please move the sleeve. Please move the sleeve. Please move the sleeve. And then people said like, oh, there's a prey lock. We must do aggression. We must do this. We must do this. And then other people said like, oh, no, I come with a hidden sleeve. I come with a bite pillow, whatever. But then to get the dog to the bite pillow to bite, what, had you, did you, what must you do? You must give the dog a verbal, a signal. Yes. It could be a click or a yep or whatever. What people didn't recognize, right? They did it unconsciously. With a verbal cue to, that you can take the reward, the bite, they took all the attention away from the sleeve to your face. Because the dog's watching your Because mouth. the dog starts learning, you know what? I don't care about the sleeve anymore. Also, if you still be reward the sleeve. In this moment, you say yes or yep or click or whatever. I can pick up the sleeve or the toy. The barking got clear. Yes. Pretty simple. All in common. If you have a little bite pillow, throw it out. The common factors all time. You give a verbal cue and people didn't realize what they was doing. They said like, oh, it's a new thing, it's a new thing. No. You know what you just did? You give the dog a cue to get rewarded. Yep. You get rewarded. Click. You get rewarded. And suddenly that takes the focus away from sleeve to your face because you, they wait for you say yes. Makes sense. Simple. Yeah, look at the face. It's simple. The face, because the signals come from Because the how face. many dogs can bark great for a ball in your face, they bark in front of you for the ball, you know, like today, yeah. like close to everyone can do it. You know, the dog sits in front of you, barks, 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 you say, yep, or click, here's the ball. Yeah. But in the blind, you have the trouble. Why? Because you created a wrong picture for the dog. Yes, makes sense. And, like, and that's like, you know, you can go online, and again, I'm a better person today, right? I don't name any names anymore. But from, from deep south to high north, right? Well-known people. You watch the videos and you say like, why would you do that? Why would you put the sleeve on the ground for the bargain and hold? And every time when you pick up the sleeve, you show the dog you don't bark anymore because I show you consistently like prey movement and then you can bite. How is it productive for you that you show the dog if the sleeve is on this height, you don't bark anymore. It's only good to bark on the ground. Two different pictures, non-verbal communication for the dog. Simple. It's simple, I often say simple, but it's simple. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. There's like no, there's no secret in training, right? I give you a good, good other example, right? Jumping, because we talk about jumping. People often said like, oh, the dog's gonna jump anymore. Today, People create on the jump too much speed. Do you need speed for height? No. no. If you ever watch Olympics, right? You watch like the, the far jumpers, right? In the, in the Olympics, how you call it, like far jumping? Long jump. Long jump. They must run fast, right? Yes. For the high jump, what do you do? Technique. Yes. 
we crazy people, right? We create more and more speed, right? And then we put like a reward system behind the jump, what is way too high and puts the dog into mind stage that the dog doesn't care to hit the bones on the boards. Yeah. If you put the ball there or a pillow or whatever else and the dog hits the board, the dog says, you know what? No problem. No problem. Yeah. But if you would do it, create like the jumping in a low drive behavior and teach the dog to jump technique and there's food for that and there's food for that, the dog in a low drive behavior. And if the dog starts to touch on a wooden jump or like a metal bar on the top, whatever, the dog knows, you know what? It hurts. Comparison to you go in a bar, someone comes, aggravates you, you start fighting. You fight them, you go out, you don't feel anything. Why? You are on a, on a high. Uh, adrenaline. So, right. The opposite is like in the night, you awake, you go to the best room and you hit your toe on the door. Yeah. Low drive behavior. Hurts like shit. Yes. Mm. Same with the dog. The dog in a low drive behavior on the jump, it hurts, they start sinking. Mm. But if, if the desire or the, the reward is so high that the dog is in the mind stage that it doesn't hurt anymore. How does the dog learn? Yeah. You see, then it's like people do now, now they get even smarter, right? Now they put like a stick out and let it go back and forth, faster and faster, back and yeah. forth, back and forth. No brainer. It's about speed on the jump. The, ju the judge doesn't see speed on the jump. Yes. Rule says like five steps away from the jump. The new rule says like five steps and then like eight meters, right? So the judge, so the dog jumps, the judge sees the dog running for like three or four steps before he jumps. So how can you describe speeds there? A lot of people set up away from the jump, more, far. Further, right. But it's like yeah. you don't see really any more speed really, you know? Yeah. If the dog goes like normal speed there, it's not like, 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 like crowding there, yeah. you don't see any difference, right? But it's important to have like clean jumps. But we create like pictures or we create like a thing what never fits. Speed doesn't create height. Yes. And then is a part, right, where... People don't have even like a good jump. Yes. But they put always a dumbbell into the jump. So if your dog cannot jump full height without a dumbbell, why we let him, let him jump with a dumbbell? It doesn't match. Yes. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And it's about the pictures. You know, the dog must clear pictures. The jump means like, you know what? You jump over there, free. It's about speed, about technique. But what do we do many times? Create too much drive, too much speed, too many pictures who never fit. Hey guys, before we continue, let's talk about something exciting. Have you ever wanted access to the same pro tools and products that we use here at Shield K9? Look no further. We've restocked the products at the Shield K9 online store, your ultimate destination for dog training essentials. From styling shirts to really cool dog training toys that I like to use every day when I train my dogs, thousands of customers can't be wrong. Visit our website at shieldk9.ca and start training with confidence today. Let me switch tacks for a second and ask you, because we kind of talked about breeding, but then we, we went away from it. What do you look for in a stud dog? You see, that's, that's a good question, right? I look at a stud dog for breed worseness, you know? Breed worseness, you know? Means like the dog must have like the bow effect, you know? The dog, dog should have like a really high, high, high prey behavior, right? A high commitment to, to possess, right? A high commitment to defend, a high commitment to keep pressure, a high commitment to recover. Then the dog must have like a good breed, breed behavior, right? If I go to a male for breeding and the male gets scared for the female, I drive home. I drive home. You know what, I drove 10 hours, sorry. If he's like, 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 a little like, like, like scared for the female because she growls at him, or you must help him up there, I don't breed with you. Why? Because in nature you wouldn't breed. Yeah. In nature you would not breed. So what you want from a male is like all these things what you expect from like, say like, like a pack leader, right? That's the best description for sure, like a pack leader. The one who eats first. The one who bangs the chicks. The one who defends the territory. That all belongs to, to a dog who should be a stud. On the opposite side with a female, right? What do you expect from a female? I expect from a female the same, less or more, right? She must want to keep her food. If she doesn't want to keep her food, how can she take care of puppies? A female should have like an extreme hunt drive and an instinct to kill critters. Why? If a female is not willing to kill a cat or 
a squirrel or whatever else. How can she support a litter? Oh, that's interesting. That's where you go back to nature. Primal. That's what you want. Because if they don't have this drive anymore, what else do they not have anymore? Ah. Uh, oh, you see, like, for example, Grazia, because of, of Quartus' mom, right? Grazia, for example, you feed her, right? Then she goes back to the, then she's with the puppies running around, right? Like a half hour later, latest, right? She goes to the puppies and pukes half the food out. And let them eat that. Wow. Prime example of, of old blood, right? Natural. All yeah. by himself, right? For all are right? Every critter was running around was not safe for her, right? It doesn't matter if a mouse or, or a bird or whatever. Everything she saw was for her like a prey, what she needs to kill. She by herself, the best mom ever. Raising the puppies really hard, but all time consistent feeding and so on, right? Keeping clean. On the same side, her, her recovery time for impact, right? For control, when you put control on her, zero to nothing, right? It's like you put pressure on her, like no it doesn't problem. matter. No problem. Same with a male, right? You put pressure on them, doesn't matter. Same with puppies today, right? When you, as a breeder, right? The best thing is like you take a puppy out, six, seven weeks old, bring him like on an on a open field, you know, where he doesn't know. You take the puppy, take the, take the fur, put it on the, on the neck, shake him for the moment, three, four times, put it on the ground and see how the puppy reacts. A good puppy will recover in a second. You will have some puppies that will sit there, sit there for the next minute because they cannot recover from the stress. Do you want this puppy for the sport or for work? No. No, you should only be six weeks, you cannot handle it. Yes. And it was nothing bad handling. That's what a mom does to a puppy. She takes them to the back and shakes them. Yeah. If a puppy cannot handle that, how can he handle any stress later in training? The same with a male. If you control the male and the male start like, like giving up by, by low control or like little impact, how can he reproduce a strong working dog? No resilience, no commitment. Absolutely. Or not enough. For example, hunt drive, testing hunt drive, right? When you have a dog, right, you hold the dog, throw the toy, you hold the toy, you throw the toy as far as you can, you hold the dog back for a minute, right? And let the dog go. Yeah. You won't see the dog keep searching and searching and searching. Must he find? It doesn't matter if he finds, but he must keep going and going and going and going. If he finds a bonus, right? In bite works the same, right? The dog should go in and take the sleeve out wherever you are, however you are. It doesn't matter if you're in the bushes, if you're in the blind, if you're in the basement, whatever, the dog should have so much commitment to say, you know what, I take the sleeve off you. Yes. That's the drive you won't see. When you throw the ball away and the dog comes back, you won't see grass in his mouth as he says, really, like, you know what, I have commitment to take it. You know, then you want at the same time with food, what I think is for me important, the dog still proves, you know, what is his food, what I said before, right? People call it food aggression. It's not food aggression. It's like his fucking food. It's if we go out and eat... You don't like I go with my fork on your plate. For sure, no. Why should the dog accept it? Yes. But that makes a difference in like a dog, in my opinion, who has all the working quality, right? Like the drive, the grip behavior, the speed or the long attack, you know, everything else. And then the normal stuff, normal stuff in my eyes is like with the food. Yes. He won't possess his food. If you can go in there and take it out and play with his food, he says, you know what? No problem. I don't want to survive. I don't want to survive. Not a dog for breeding. If you go to breeding with a female and the female growls, he walks away. <laughs> Not a dog for breeding. I think people really get it twisted, you know, because it's, it's interesting. Like, I'll, I'll get people all the time of like, you know, I have a female. I want to buy a puppy from you and then I'm going to breed to the female. And I always say, no, this is stupid. What are the chances? Even if you're from a good litter, what are the chances you have a stud dog from a good litter? Sperm is cheap. There's, we're looking, we're, when you're comparing like, uh, when you're comparing males to males, it's like not even males that are good should still maybe not be bred. Oh, absolutely. Like absolutely. males that are good enough in the sport. You know, people ask all, because I post again, obviously on YouTube, my dog Gage a lot. They're like, oh, when are you going to make puppies from this? I said, I'm not making puppies from this dog. I think people don't understand there's a difference between like a normal dog, a good dog and a breed worthy dog. Different. There's a difference, right? There's a yes. difference. There's a normal dog, right? The normal dog is good for everything, right? Yes. You can do everything with him. Then there's a really good dog. You know he can go to every championship and maybe win the championship. But then there's a dog who's a breed worthy one. And you want this one. Yes. And the idea behind breeding should be, you know what? 
or my opinion is that I should be careful with what I say, right? My my soul thinking, right? I won't breed the one dog. That's what I breed for. For this one dog with a wow effect. You know what? Lucky me, in the tea litter, I was other dogs who was successful, right? The L litter had like two dogs or three dogs. The G litter had a few dogs. You know, where it was really good. Um, but it's like, in the end, right? It's like for me, like Quartus, Terror, Leon, Larry, Trojan breeding wise later. Um, Terror brother in, in Ireland was a maniac. Um, who else was there? Onzo, for example, you know, the Larry son, you saw the Onzo, the Larry son, the flying in the, in the long attack. Yes. Yardis, for example, Yardis. Yardis was like an older lady, right? The best home ever, the dog, you know, is like, like an airplane on the long attack, more drive than, than, than brain, more food drive than brain. He will never go anywhere, right? But it's like a dog where you say, like, you know, that's, that's what I want. That's what I want. And that's like the, the one special dog. I don't care about the rest. I didn't care about, like, the, the whole Ivan litter. Mm -hmm. Ivan was the dog in the litter where you say, like, man, that's like a fucking maniac. Ivan, uh, oh, you're talking about yeah. Ivan von der Stasmark. Yeah. That was like a dog where you say, like, you know what, there was a great litter, you know, there was some, some good dogs in the litter, you know. But you know what, Ivan was the one where you breed for, the one. And you wouldn't breed on the other ones. No, it's like, it's like, it's not beneficial. And people don't get that. They're like, well, no. if, if Ivan's good, then they're all good. And it's no, like, they're that's not, not how it works. They might have the same pedigree, but they don't have the same, the same, the same quality on dog, you know, the same the genetic expression. Dog. Yeah. It's like, like, like it's important to see, you know, it's like you want the best. If you compare with, with, let's say like, if I see someone with a dog can run like 50 miles an hour, the dog 50 miles an hour, right? Yes. I want my dog run 50 or 51 miles an hour. I don't want the dog 45 miles an hour. Yeah. I want the fast dog. I want the dog in the stadium on the long attack where people make whoa. Yes. I want the dog in obedience when they throw, throw a ball away who comes back with the grass and mouse is like, man, that's a maniac. Or the dog who's like by 100 degrees still throwing the legs and still, still walking the, the next half hour. Yeah. That's the dog I want. Yeah. I don't want the other one who maybe looks good and is well trained. I don't want that. And that's not didn't breed. I, I bred for this one dog. And people all the time said like, oh, you only breed for this one dog. You're right. I breed for this one dog. But my side product, right, was autumn good enough for the rest. Yes. That's because you're using extreme. So even right. the dogs that aren't extreme, they're right. still good enough. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's makes. the point, you know. It's like, that's, that's for me, autumn's the point where you say like, when you think about history, right, we talk about Yoshi Dolan Visa. How are his brother and his sisters? Don't know him. No one cares. Nick Halligan Bush. There was Nico, he produced like some, and there was Nuts. Nico was for sure better than Nuts, but not like Nick. So who knows Nico and Nuts at all? No one. Who knows the brother of Tyson Schiffslache, Toro Schiffslache? No one. Who knows the brother of Oleg Zavazori? No one, because it doesn't matter. Yeah. The only one that matters is the one who has like the determination, the willingness, the power, the dominance to follow his, his target. That's the only one you want for breeding. No one cares about the rest. And people can also say like, yeah, but, but, but history told you. Ferus heute Himmelreich. I don't know the brothers or the sisters. Troll bis Nachbarschaft and Timmy bis Nachbarschaft. There was more puppies in the litter. Where are the dogs? No one cares. What's with the brother of Grog Erbenbusch? What's with the brother of Minkhaus Wittfeld? Where are they? No one cares. You know why? Because they didn't have an impact. They didn't have the quality and the impact in breeding. But today people it's, autumn think like today people think autumn like oh we can try because it's the same blood and this and I can use this. No, it's watered down. It's interesting. So it seems like from a breeding perspective, you're really looking for those primal traits. Because as we domesticate, obviously when we domesticate animals, we domesticate them to offer us a level of compliance uh, that a wild animal would never give you. And we domesticate certain un undesirable traits like you know, obviously like a wolf or, or a coyote is terrified of everything because that's what keeps them alive. We remove the self-preservation because too much self-preservation is not so good for a working dog. Um, but it seems like in the breeding, you are looking a lot to maintain the primal traits, the hunting, the, uh, the, the resilience to pressure. Um, Absolutely. You know, the, 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 prime, the dog that, that won't give up his food, won't give up his ball. The dog that has a high level of, of, of possession 
for everything. Absolutely. These are primal traits. These aren't so much domestic traits. Maybe not so easy to live with some of those that, types. Just like I said with a female, right? A female should be willing to, to kill to kill the feeds of puppies, you know? Yes. If they don't do it anymore, it's like there's no taking care of puppies. Yeah. But I explain that to people. I explain to people if you, and I saw like a lot of females over the years who came for breeding, right? And they're, they are scared for their own shadow. They don't want to go like into, into like a slippery floor or whatever. He said like, man, you want to breed with this piece of whatever? Yeah. She cannot even walk like on slippery floors. How, how can she support a puppy of litters who, who maybe lays on the tile floor? She wouldn't survive there by herself because she wouldn't go to the puppies. Yeah. But it's like a normal, a normal trait that you say like, I need like, I need it in my female and in my male, you know? People are nuts today. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Stefan, where can people find you? At home in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Should we give your address? You see, <laughs> you see I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, see, I was really lucky, right? Like, like, was like, I moved from, from Germany to Minnesota, right? I had like great years in Minnesota, right? I had a nice facility there, a nice house. And then I for sure met like the best person for my lifestyle, right? Sabrina. Sabrina, you're on here. So Sabrina's for sure like the, the, the part that keeps it all grounded at, at home in Georgia, right? So we could move to Georgia, build the facilities here right now, still building yeah. a lot, great kennel system, great training field, you know, like sports size field, you know, irrigated all, everything nice grass. I mean, pretty sure we host them soon, like a bigger championship for sure. But mostly like training, you know, it's like, say it the right way. Do I train for money anymore? For sure must make my living still, right? But I don't break my neck anymore, right? I, I, I like the few people where I train consistent with, right? For sure, I take autumn like some people in where, where I hope they do the right thing and would do more. But I'm not anymore open to like a lot of people for training, right? It's for me like... They have to be the right people. Yeah, for me it's like more now about like enjoying the last, last 15, 20 years maybe now because now I'm already 51 years old now. So the next like 10, 15 years like in training, right? Like like getting some good people going still. The, the, the most of the people, right? The base people is like, why you waste your time, right? The money doesn't make you rich anymore, you know? If I, if I make like a month like, like $2,000 or $4,000, it doesn't change my life. So you're telling me you don't want people to hit you up? I didn't say that. I said, <laughs> I said, only, I said only if you, if you leave your shit at home and you are straight minded to do the right thing, you know? I, it's like... I don't, I don't, I don't want to waste my time with crap, right? For example, I have one lady there, right? Or a lady, right? I think she's like 80 years old now. She's like a walker, right? Does she fit in my picture of like, of like my training's world? Yeah. For sure not. <laughs> But she's a great lady, right? 80 years old. She just made the IPO one with a dog, right? On the walker, right? Yeah. That's like a person on a straight out, right? you accept in training because she's a great person. I send 10 other people home for the bullshit talk and backstabber stabbing and whatever else and, and, and sharing like videos and whatever else bullshit what they do today the people because they can't trust anymore anyone, right? You train they take like seriously videos of you. Yeah. You send them home or they talk behind your back, you send them home. I don't do it anymore, you know? For me, it's like, it's more important the, the person on itself and, and proves the point, you know? It doesn't help you to have like someone there who who puts like more drama into your life than, than results on the field. So if you're no bullshit, hit up Stefan. Yeah, if you know bullshit and- If you and are, maybe find but somebody you, else. But you must, say it, you must say it the right way. If you are no bullshit and you, you have a thick skin to take all the jokes, the bad jokes, and you know the Europeans are way more open than other people, you know? Yeah. We run around in underwear at home and everything else. So, you know, it's like different. It's our different world. But now without kidding, you know, it's like, I think like, At this point of my life, you know, it's like, it's not about money anymore. Yeah. It's not about money. It's like, for me, breeding was never about money either way. The training for sure, it's part was about money because it's about your living. But now, you know, I live in Georgia. We have a good life. You know, it's like, like I said, right? If I would make like $2,000 or $4,000, it doesn't change my life. Fair yeah. enough. Well, we're going to drop your website either way yeah. in the description below, guys. So if you want to um, get in touch with Stefan uh, relating to training or puppies, because he has a very active uh, breeding program. Yeah, we was like we, we stopped breeding for a short time because of like familiar stuff going on, you know, moved to Georgia, we didn't breed for a while. Now we are back. 
It's a beautiful kennel. I've seen yep, uh, yep. seen the pictures. Rebuilt a brand new kennel. Yep, all in black and white. Nice, everything concrete blocks, just like Germans would do it. That's right. Yep. <laughs> yep. You come, you feel like in Fantasy careful, Island. Careful now. We still want a trial. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Black and well, we like black and white here. Absolutely. Too. But like I said before, yeah. right? It's like I'm I'm for sure open to to train with people, whatever, right? But but must be like really like. It must fit, you know. I don't take take the garbage on what other people send away anymore. I'm I'm done with that, you know. Absolutely. Over the years, you know, over the years, you see like how many people put the knife in your back and twist it, and it's like you talk about the dog sport world, and oh it's like God. crazy stuff, you know. Anytime somebody, you know, gets it's always happening. It seems in Europe, some trainer gets clipped. They just clip all the corrections, I mean, and then all the people going on, coming on, uh, coming on social media, going, "Oh, this is terrible." It's like stupid, like. This 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 girl saying this nonsense is like oh this is terrible. I was like bitch, I was at the same seminar you were. I was watching what you were doing to your dog. Why are you talking about this? Is the guy that you were hugging him and you were you know taking pictures with him and now all of a sudden he's a bad guy? That's a prime example, you know, <laughs> like like the guy from Germany, right? Like two or three years ago, right? He was like under under fire. They they shared like videos secretly filmed, whatever, right? He was like in trouble, and the guy was here in the states for sure, like. 10, 15 times, you know, with a lot of people. Everyone's like taking pictures and hugs and takes them out for dinner and let them sleep at the house. This thing happens, you know? And everyone is like, we are IGP, we are IGP, we are IGP. Whoa, 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 wait. You paid for his training. You paid less or more that he has dinner with you. You paid that he sleeps at your house. You paid for his advice, you bought dogs from him. And now because someone leaks a video was complete taken out of consent. Yeah. And the next thing what you do says, fuck you, and we are IGP. Mm. Fuck you. Yeah. You know, that's like where I got like with some people in, into fight about it, like two years ago when I said like, you know what, you're all like, like fucking Spineless. rats. You are rats because you were sucking his dick. Sorry for the, just saying that. <laughs> <laughs> he was playing on his balls, right? Forever. <laughs> with your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth, but you're playing with balls forever, and now it's like, there's videos online, what he does in training, and now you write, we are IGP. You just showed your face, and I don't, I don't like it. I don't want us to any of these people, you know? Yeah. It doesn't make it doesn't Too make many fun. of them. Yeah, it's like when we train, right? When we train, I know, you know, we, we, we train the dog, right? We have fun, we talk about it. We are straight out. I can tell you it's bullshit, not bullshit. When I say you do something that I don't like, I would say like, you know, in my opinion, it's like bullshit, you know, what you do there. But it's like, I know exactly it stays between you and me. And you don't see it like next month on an online channel somewhere and someone said like, oh, you saw that? He pulls the dog's ear. Yeah. No, I didn't pull the dog's ear. I pet him there. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, pe people are crazy. But it's like, you know, that's the reason I say with people is like, you must be so careful. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And there's no reason to, to, to ruin your life with people like this. And you know who I mean? Did you raise the camera? <laughs> you know who I mean? Remember that. Well, Carson, you've contributed a lot to this conversation. So I think I, I like, counted. It was about three words the whole time. Well, now it's, what, six more? Yeah. Thanks for all your help. No problem. But Carson, you know, like here because Carson is here, right? So it's Carson. When he came last time to training, that like a super nice dog, right? Like a big boy, hard dog, right? How do you describe him? How do you describe him? Motherfucker. Right. It's like super hard dog, you know. <laughs> things like he can fight the punishment, you know. But that's like a dog where you like, where's... Where, where you get like a kick in training him, you say like, man, that was a fun session, right? Because to put the dog in his place and see like, after like a few, few sessions that the dog suddenly complies and said like, you know what? Life is not so bad if I do it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's Real like, training. Yeah, and especially like with, with Carson, I don't know how many dogs he trained before, before in the sport, but it's like, it's also nice to see people like striving and doing the right thing and, and, and understanding and, and, and understand the system. How many dogs have you trained before in the sport, Carson? Zero. You see, that's <laughs> even, his first. But even better, you know, even better because Carson was really open and, and understand like fast the concept of like, 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 well, accept or not accepting. There wasn't many choices, so we kind of had to, so. Yeah. Well, you said, you said, I want a real dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now we got two. Now, yeah, second one. <laughs> yeah. It's a good first dog, eh? Yeah, it was super, ni <laughs> super nice dog, crazy grip behavior, really good speed, like, like, I mean, really dominance. Mm -hmm. All what you wanted a dog. Yeah. Absolutely. I bred him once. I bred him once, and guess what? The puppies were all nice. No, I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. You can see it on the dog. You know, the dog nice was like puppies. a dog was like was like a, a good, a good, solid, solid behavior. You know, gives yeah. normally like good puppies. You know, mm -hmm. 
and the puppies were not they didn't have the, that extreme oh, like it. behavior I they were it. they're very like stable you'll yeah. stable you'll see one of them yeah. you see like for example yeah. Ivan Ivan by himself was so sure like with some stuff you know extreme dominant you know like like fought a lot back but most of his offspring right is like not like him, right? Social way behaved, you know? Yeah. I would say that maybe like 80% of him most, you know? There's like maybe one or two where they like, they come close to him behavior, right? But most of them are really like social, you know? Live in the family, whatever, right? It's like easy going, you know? Yeah. But that's how yeah. it is, you know? When I told you before, you breathe with 100% and you hope for 80%. If you yeah. breathe with, with 50%, you get maybe 25% out, you know? Yeah. And with that, guys, we're gonna get some steak. Um, I will be posting video of uh we'll, we'll post some uh, video that stefan approves of of our uh, seminar we look forward to training with him this weekend it's going to be a lot of uh, fun as yeah, always absolutely thank you so much for inviting me and uh i hope we don't miss our uh, dinner reservation that steak's waiting for We're us half an hour late <laughs> <laughs> it's friday they're gonna stay late <laughs> all right so once again, guys, Stefan's information is below. You can see it in the description. Also, I now have a Patreon where I'm showing some of those videos that we can't show on YouTube on the Patreon. So you guys can see that. Maybe you'll see some of Stefan's stuff on there. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's up to him. But um, yeah, so check out the Patreon. Again, links in the description below. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. This very podcast will be released early on the Patreon. So that's just one of the benefits of being on the Patreon. Also, raw training footage, stuff I will not show on YouTube, you get to see it on Patreon.